probably yeah. narrowness hey, of the everybody. screen. Here we are. It's November 28th. It's almost December. What's going on with that? That's weird. I don't know. Um, you're here at the Chaos Weekly Community Call, and um, look at everyone's little happy faces. I love it. I hope everybody's doing good, doing well, I should say. I think that's grammatically better than good. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we're all friends here. Um, if you have not told us what flavor or spice that you really dislike, that everyone else seems to like, that'd be great. Or not. And maybe you like everything, and that's also completely valid. Um, just a quick reminders before we start, um, this is under our chaos code of conduct, so keep that in mind, just as you interact with us today and um, also you're more than welcome to keep your cameras on off, however you prefer to interact with us as always is totally fine, we do not care at all. Um, and also, since this is chaos con planning season, we usually split this meeting up and so the regular part of the meeting will happen the first 30 minutes and then everybody can leave unless you're on the chaos con planning committee and you would like to stick around and help us discuss some things um, that'll be the last 20 minutes of the of the meeting and if somebody can do me a favor and just watch for newcomers that come in the channel um and give them the me meeting minutes that would be great because i'll be busy doing other things so i'm not gonna be able to do that Okay, so to kick it off, just a quick reminder, um, it's this time of year when we, you know, as we were talking about earlier, things just slow down. So we have no chaos meetings December 11th to January 8th, which means we will have, what, like one more meeting? Is that right? No, two meetings, one meeting, one or two, just one. I think one. One more meeting. And um, you're welcome to show up here, but nobody else will join you. So you will just be meeting by yourself if you come after next week, um, which is totally fine. You can do it, it's fine. Um, so yeah, any questions on any of this? Anybody confused as to why we do this? Because that's a pretty big break. But we like to not burn everybody out. So, I mean, and also I should say, if you are working on a project, um, you're more than well welcome to keep doing that. It's just the meetings that we're going to kick off and not do. So um, we're kicking them to the curb and you can just keep working through Slack, however, GitHub, however, if you're working on a project with somebody else or by yourself, um, feel free to keep doing that. Because I know there are some things that will keep going, like our chaos con planning, for instance, and some other things. So, so yeah, questions, comments on this before we move on. All good. Yeah, Randy. So I guess the big news, uh, or one piece of big news, is the um, DEI project badging update. So now that it has been posted to GitHub, we can actually talk about this <laughs> instead of dancing around it. Um, here's the post if you want to read it. Essentially, in a nutshell, we kicked off this project with the all in open source, which is a project run by GitHub. And um, they partnered with us on the pilot for DEI project badging. And now that the pilot's pretty well done, um, we're going to be moving this into production and really scaling it up. Um, and that will happen uh, with chaos independently. So essentially, chaos is going to be running the DEI project badging um, uh, uh, independent of all in. And they're still welcome to collaborate. GitHub folks are still going to collaborate. Um, we have a lot of, or not a lot, we have several folks from GitLab who are also collaborating with us on the project. Um, we've had some big projects like Django express interest in going through the process. So we've, um, it's, we're really excited about 2024 in particular. I think um, you'll really see a, an uptick in uh, adoption of the DEI project badging. And if you're not familiar with this, I will just give a quick 10 second overview of it. Unlike our event badging that includes manual reviews of every application, the DEI project badging is a little bit, um, because we had to scale it a little bit more. Um, so it's more automated. So um, people will be creating a DEI.md file in their uh, repos, either GitHub, GitLab, wherever they wanna put it. 
and um, our uh, code will scan, our bot will scan for that file. We'll look at what's in that file, make sure that um, they're attending to four of our DEI metrics that we have chosen specifically for this file. If the headers match, if the language looks good, if it's all uh, seems, seems kosher, then um, they will get issued a badge and that will happen by email. And then they can put that badge wherever they want. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Here's the badging repo. If you uh, want to participate in this project or collaborate with us on anything, we um, here's the template that we are giving folks in project open source projects to use. So these are the four metrics that they have to attend to and tell us how they are attending to those. And then there's also a guide that we provide for them as well, which is here, and it just helps tell them how to do it. Uh, we also are working, I should have put this in here as well, but um, we are working on a website right now that will unify event badging and project badging in one place and have it all look seamless and coordinated and together. Um, as right now it's still a little bit, you know, it's a little bit on different levels. Um, yeah, so that's what we're working on. And I would love to answer questions. I would love to also include Matt, Sean, uh, Ruth, if she's on the call, whoever else has been involved in this, um, to offer any other additional comments that I happen to miss. Uh, Elizabeth, I just have a little concern. Like uh, they were, as you said, they'll send the badge through email. I think uh, we need to make some measures to control for that because emails might not be the right measures to control for this kind of thing, given that uh, they can easily change, they can easily be, and we don't have control over what we have evaluated like a project. I'm not refusing that they cannot use email, but they should have some extra measures to control that the batch that uh, Kios has issued really goes to the repository. So I should also add that similarly to our event badging uh, initiative, we will keep a list of folks who have gone through the process and a link. So yes. um, not to say somebody still can't fudge it and put, put something on their site. Um, we are relying on communities to mm -hmm. self-police um, because we don't want to have to go through every single one um, because there's a lot of projects out there, yeah, right? Like there's just so many projects. So we are really relying on those communities to self-police. And um, if someone has issued, a, 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 has posted a badge and does not have a DEI.md file, for instance, we would rely on the community to report that to the leaders of the project. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, make that known, but um, that's an excellent point. Yeah, and we're also, I should also say with the with the badge, we are not guaranteeing that it is, you know, 100% safe and inclusive and wonderful community. We are only um, saying that they went through the process and they have a, um, a DEI.md file that seems to be something that has been, has had thought put into it. So we don't like go back and verify that what they're saying is actually true. Um, yeah. You know, they've never had a report or anything like that. We are, that's not our job here. Our job is just to uh, signal that this is something that they care about and that they went through the process. Yeah. So that helps a little bit, but I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah. And we will also um, use the email that they have already in their GitHub or GitLab account. So it kind of is all just seamless for them. They just need to be logged in and it will just go to that email as well. So hopefully that will also keep somebody from spoofing, I guess, would be the right word there, um, spoofing so, yeah. that they're coming from another project or something like that, because they do have to be logged in and it will pull up all of the projects that they are owners of. So they have to be an owner of the project and they have to be logged in. Any other questions or comments? I'm good. I think you got it all. Okay. I just maybe I'd like to recognize, you know, Kingsley. He's doing a lot of the design work. So you had mentioned like we have the project badging site, the event badging site, and then we'll have just kind of one over the overarching kind of landing page for both of those sites. 
and Kingsley's working on the design to get that um, implemented. And then I'd like to recognize Enoch, who's doing a lot of the working with Sean on a lot of the backend work. So just kind of ensuring that the servers are up and running, <laughs> that mm -hmm, yeah. somebody pushes a button, things actually work. Um, probably like to recognize um, Marco from GitLab, who has submitted the PR to actually allow GitLab groups, um, projects to submit for the badge as well. And I know that Enoch, Sean, you you weren't on the call. We had a little sync yesterday. I know you were in Chicago. Yeah. But um, Enoch said he's kind of just working through those PRs with Marco, just to yeah. make sure there's not any basically cascading effects to the database. You know, there so like changes, be. could you so could you take a look at those? He was just concerned that like updating any of the code. The kind of the back end soft uh, back end code would have an impact on the database. Okay. I just will, in terms uh, of like data that would be captured or need to be provided. I'll, ch I'll coordinate with Enoch. Okay. I, he's, I don't think he's on the call. I don't think so either. So I'll, send, was, him a, I'll send him a Slack message to just, just set up a time tomorrow morning to chat okay. about that, make sure we're all set. Because okay. I, I passed those PRs on to him because I didn't know, I didn't develop the API, so I'm less familiar with it than I think he is. Okay. Um, but I can certainly answer the database related questions. Okay, it might be helpful. Yep, I uh, will message him right now while we're talking. Okay. And then Ruth has been doing a lot of the, I think a lot of the copy on the pages, just a lot of the text. So thanks to everybody for that. All right, we will move on. If anybody does have any questions um, that you think of later on, don't hesitate to ask in either the DEI working group Slack or the badging. There's a, a hashtag badging Slack channel as well. So you can ask in either of those places. I think you'll probably get a good answer in either of those places. Moving on to Chaos Africa, I just wanted to leave some space for any updates from that from that side, from that community, um, I don't know, Yiga, Hamza, Anita, any, is there anything in uh, particular of note that you wanted to bring to the larger community? Any of you? I wasn't sure if Ruth was gonna be here today or not. Totally fine if not, don't wanna put y'all on the spot. <laughs> Hi, Elizabeth, hi everyone. Um... So I wasn't in the last meeting, but I do know that um, we're trying to organize like a, a end of the year hangout, just something calm and cool, just for chaos members to hang out. It's the end of the year kind of thing. So I know that um, that is ongoing and we're trying to pick dates. Um, there's a group of us, you know, in, we just created a group sort of, um, so that's like the little updates that I do have on my end. <laughs> so yes, I don't know if anybody else has something else to add. You, you get, or Anita, do you, does anybody know when the next Chaos Con Africa is going to be? Or at least thought to be? Yeah, so, um, ChaosCon Africa, the last was co-located with Oscar Fest. And so I think it should be around the time when Oscar Fest is going on. If not July, June, July, they're about. Okay. I see it's mid-June, like June 15th. Oh, sorry, sorry, just to clarify on that. Uh... Oscar Fest usually happens around February and March. If you look at the previous one, the reason why they had it somewhere around June last year is because the general election happens in uh, between February and March. That's why. Okay, gotcha. Oh, and so... then uh, Ruth is Ruth is sending us uh, um, some cool some cool swag from Chaos. So thank you. Yeah, I mean, I personally right now I'm 
kind of planning on attending to go. And so my question on the dates was just for me alone too. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, oh, that would be nice. That would be nice. We're That's really awesome. proud to have you. <laughs> Love to come. Uh, Okay, well, we might want to. I'd love to meet all all y'all. <laughs> yeah. um, so okay, yeah, just keep me posted too. As I don't know if there's a planning committee for that, um, like things that you all might need, just in terms of support for Chaos Con Africa. Sure. Great. Awesome. All right. Uh, I will go ahead and move on if there's nothing else about Chaos Africa we want to talk about. Thanks you all for jumping in to to tell us what's what's up. That's great. I'm not sure what this is. <laughs> <laughs> put this in is still yeah. on the I otherwise we make something up i'll just make make it up and we'll talk no, about I did it because um well sophia and georg are both on this call and they may or may not want to talk about it but i know they've been doing some work around trying to understand open source project like artifact use downstream and i just would love to hear more about that or if you want to talk about it if not that's okay too We could spot. talk about it. Uh, yeah, well, Garrick and I have been chatting about it on the side too because we're we're just going through and final checking all the all the things. Um, but yeah, we were looking at counting or attributing usage um, and looking at actual usage of a project versus estimation of usage. So sort of a continuation of the conversation we had in Dublin. <laughs> Um, at ChaosCon and then with a number of individuals after the fact. Um, and with the support of the Flutter team at Google, we were able to run a case study comparing their collected telemetry with proximate metrics that we pulled from GitHub and Stack Overflow and Slack. Um, and we're writing up the findings now, but it seems to indicate that things like stars and forks are actually quite aligned to the growth of users, at least within the Flutter community. Um, but I think it's it's really, it's just one case. We're curious whether or not this could be replicated in other projects. Um, and so we're, we're aiming to submit this to the MSR mining software repositories event uh, and conference in Q2 next year. Um, so we hope to bring this to the research community and see if others can and replicate and or challenge our initial findings from this case study. So um, not that I'm about to do another one right away, but I guess the general call to the chaos community is if you do know of projects that are actively collecting telemetry um, with other means as in direct means versus um, more approximate means, um, this is a way that we're trying to validate which metrics are better at predicting usage so that we don't have to go ahead and embed telemetry in all of our projects. Um, Garrick, is there anything else you want to add to that? That sums it up pretty well. The findings are pretty interesting. I'm, I'm excited that we can rethink our project health metrics now that we are looking at it um, with some actual telemetry data, something we couldn't do before. So I would say the last thing is just thank you, Matt, Don, Vinod, Kevin, um, who all went in and edited our paper. So uh, thank you for jumping in last minute and giving us your feedback. And I, we appreciate the extended research community in the chaos bubble. I did have just one quick question. When you said stars and forks might be good proxies for the telemetry, is it stars and or forks? Or is it stars and forks? Is it both? Oh, okay. I'm looking at the looking at the them cumulatively. Um, okay. 
but again, this is just one project. So yeah, yeah. who knows if it's the case with other projects. <laughs> bring stars back to life the like yeah it's funny because that's what don and i were talking about uh, on the side channel was just that stars were we've been discounting stars for a long time um because it's just like this is just a vanity popularity metric um but maybe there's a little bit more value to them than we previously thought that's interesting yeah that's interesting just to wonder i mean sometimes it's good to look what people have uh, done in this space and Based on my little exp exposure with this MSR community, I'm a reviewer there, by the way. Uh, most people have been using machine learning um, techniques to do this kind of prediction. So might be you want to consider, I mean, there are a handful of uh, algorithms in that space that could really be handy. And it could help you also to generalize your work. It's something that we can talk, since you are uh, planning for next year, because the submission this year has already passed, it, it gives you ample time to now look on different measures where you could do a kind of uh, uh, generalization. It's possible, it's doable. It's just to look a little bit further beyond that project that you study, like a case study. And even if you choose to work on that particular case study, then there is something that you want to focus on it that should really be unique because uh, search the literature to make sure that what you are coming up, no one has really published on that space because there are a good uh, number of publication in that uh, category. I mean, I, I, I can give some other indication later on. I'll, I'll say my experience with MSR is that what you're doing is not not a space where they have really done a lot before, or the things that have been done are, are not as novel as what I'm hearing you describe. John, do you know any projects that are collecting telemetry data? Really, the, the, most, the most accomplished one is the Fedora project. They're... There really aren't. There is not. There has not historically been a great way of getting that data. Downloads have been the most significant proxy, and that's kind of terrible. I I think the findings that um, Sophia describes are nothing I've seen before. I don't. I don't think there is a lot of good telemetry work. I'm wondering. Um, if Sophia did the lit review. You could you could tell me if I'm wrong, but I I haven't yet. I've yet to find useful telemetry data yeah so because we we flagged a couple of possible projects i mean we ended up going with flutter because it was easier for us to work with them as google um and we could loop in one of their their contacts on the paper to help with the data collection um but we'd also had identified uh, the debian project because they have the mm -hmm. popcon yeah. um but it's it's an opt-in share so they give users their own sort of telemetry readout that can help with their own analysis and understanding of their user's profile. And then they can choose to share that back. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a two-step process, um, but it's I'm, I'm guessing that the opt-in rates are a lot lower because Flutter is an opt-out right now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's one of those things where I, I'd love to see if we could replicate this with other projects. I think most other projects don't really have it. Um, I mean, we've been talking about this in a separate channel as well, but um, SCARF emerging as looking a little more sophisticated view of the download profile could also be another point of entry um, to look at this from, again, downloads aren't great, but it's another it's another proxy. And so if we could look at it versus, um, the challenge with Flutter is that the download data wasn't public. So we were trying to rely on publicly available sources versus say Google owned sources. Um, we maintain the distribution platform for Flutter. So that wasn't publicly available data. Um, but for, again, other projects, we hope that we could look at something like downloads versus it. But I think it's the challenge is finding a project that is doing this already um, so that we can compare um, and then potentially do something more sophisticated and, and modeling as, as Armstrong was indicating. Yeah, so that's that's consistent with what I thought. I I think the the paper has the potential of demonstrating the the positive value of providing telemetry data um, over what has historically I think been a reluctance to like share that you're using it with people like the privacy 
component in open source has been dominant on this. And I, I think, you know, by, by telling a good story about how useful it is, I, I think that could move, move the needle a little bit towards people being more willing to provide this data, um, even though it's private. So I'm I'm excited about Maybe. your paper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other the other example I like to call out is that we're watching an experiment in real time, which is the Go project. Uh, GoLang um, is working on a telemetry initiative, and they're doing it with a lot of open communication with the the community. And they're also going to be doing it as opt in, and you can kind of see the Rust Rust series of Rust cock blocks that have um, kind of shown the evolution of this conversation because they're doing it with the community and buy it from the community and it started as opt-in and that sorry opt-out and that was kind of rejected so they went to opt-in but if nobody opts in then the project isn't worth anything and that we saw that happen in the kubernetes community a couple of years ago they had the spartacus project which was just that it was an opt-in telemetry um, and they didn't have enough information because uh, not enough people opted in and so they archived the project um, so that's also the risk. Yeah. So it, there's like, it's, it ha we ha haven't really had good examples. And so I think the few areas that we might be able to do this are probably more company shepherded projects that have always been doing this, um, because it was treated more like a product than a project at the beginning, even though it was released as open source. So that's sort of the hypothesis is that's where we might find examples. I, I have, I wasn't aware of the Fedora project, but I thought they were using Scarf versus their own embedded they, telemetry. They, but maybe they might be now. Good. Like my knowledge of Fedora goes back more than a decade. So I can't say I've kept up the last five years. Mm -hmm. Did you also try this uh, VS Code? I know when I was doing research with Microsoft, they were collecting a lot of telemetry data. VS Code does have it, uh, but they are Microsoft. And so we did not ask them yet. Oh. <laughs> um, but I would love to bring this paper to them and say, hey, why don't you do this too? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. So good. I think if, if this does get published again, I think I'm, I'm hoping it's a catalyst for, for more folks to start looking at this. Mm -hmm. um, if it doesn't get published, uh, Georg, we're going to publish it somewhere. <laughs> yeah. uh, why why do you it. say so? I mean, it could always be published. It all depends on the the storyline. Yeah. So, well, well, it'll be out there in some format next quarter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Great, thank you, Sophia yeah. and Georg. Just awesome. Justin, Flory, a message to see if yeah. you're I was gonna say Justin would be the person to ask, or a person to ask for sure. Yeah, uh, Georg makes a point that the yeah, Fedora people went in an up over her. I was talking with uh, Justin about this at FASI in July, and there was something that had just happened in the Fedora project where someone wanted to introduce collection of telemetry data and the community just was an uproar about it. Maybe I, can... I don't know where that went after that. Okay, well, maybe he'll tell me the same story in chat. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they've solved it by then. You can skip that one, that last one, that was me. AI and open source. Uh, I have some questions for people. Okay, we'll defer to next time. I really want to. This is a. This is going to be a question too that I really want to ask folks that are in OSPOs. Okay. I think there's an OSPO meeting this week, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, we are. We have about what sixteen minutes left, so um, we're going to save this for chaos con planning. And we'll end this part of the meeting for everybody else. So thank you so much. And I will see you all next week, hopefully, with your smiling faces and your happy thoughts. Wow. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Have a great week, everybody. See you later. And I will end the recording. There we go.